Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today we'll be continuing our study of the Song of Songs. Do you remember those feelings of young love when we sought the attention and affections of our significant others? Today, Rabbi Schneider is going to be taking us to the book of the Song of Songs to explain more about the Shulamite bride and her very special bridegroom. And if you've missed any of the messages in this study, you can catch up online when you visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And right now, here is Rabbi Schneider with today's message from our series, Mysteries of the Song of Songs. I love the Song of Songs so much because the Lord reveals a face of His to us in a way that is not revealed in any other parts of the Word of God. So, for example, when we look at God's Word, we have the book of Proverbs, which reveals God's wisdom to us. We have the book of Romans, which is a doctrinal treatise on understanding the truths of salvation. But the Song of Songs, or the Song of Solomon, reveals another facet of God's nature. It reveals to us, beloved ones, the emotional side of the Lord. The Song of Songs reveals God's affections to us in a way that no other book of the Bible, either the Old or New Testaments, does. We find in the Song of Songs the mystery of the love relationship that Father God and Yeshua have with their people. Even the rabbis of ancient Israel understood that the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs was actually a love letter to God and his people. I know that I've stated that this in its literal form is a letter that King Solomon wrote to his bride-to-be, the Shulamite bride. But there's something going on beyond that. It's a prophetic book. You see, all the books of the Bible ultimately are designed to lead us to Father through Jesus. Jesus said everything that's written in the Hebrew Scriptures was ultimately pointing to Him. So we need to look beyond the surface meaning of this book simply being a love letter between Solomon and the Shulamite bride. And we need to understand that there's something deeper going on, that it ultimately is a revelation of God's love to the church, to his people. So with that said, I'm going to pick up now in verse number four of chapter two. The Shulamite bride, who's a shadow or a type of you and I of the church, said this, he has brought me to his banquet hall and his banner over me is love. Listen once again. She's declaring, he has brought me to his banquet hall. What I want to stress here is that she was describing a real experience with God. She said, he has brought me to his banquet hall. I want to encourage you and I today to continue to contend for, to believe for, to ask for, to move towards an actual experiential relationship with the Spirit of God. You see, the Father is in heaven, Yeshua is at his right hand in heaven, but the Spirit is on the earth, and the Spirit brings us into a literal experience of a relationship with the Father and the Son. Sometimes we can be deceived thinking that we're believers— simply because we know certain doctrines and agree with those doctrines. But, beloved, knowing the doctrines and affirming that they're true is not enough to save us in the sense that we're brought into an experience. You see, Jesus said in the Gospel of John to the Pharisees, he said, you search the Scriptures because you think in them you have life. But he said, it's these, these Scriptures, that bear witness of me. And you refuse to come to me, Yeshua said, that you might have life. In other words, Jesus said the scriptures were designed to lead us to God, not to replace God, but to lead us to God. And the assumption is that we can literally be brought into an experience 
an experiential relationship with the Father and the Son through the Spirit. Let's not settle for anything else. Listen again what the Shulamite bride, who's a shadow of you and I, because ultimately the Song of Songs is a poetic love story about the relationship between God and his people. And so listen what she says. He has brought me to his banquet hall. In other words, she had been brought in to an experience. You see, the children of Israel, stay with me for a moment, the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt, but because they didn't have a vision for what God wanted to give them, which was the promised land, all of them but Joshua and Caleb died in the wilderness. In other words, you and I can affirm certain Christian doctrines. We can affirm justification by faith. We can affirm that Jesus' sacrificial atonement and his shed blood is the way for forgiveness. We can believe all those things and experience some level of deliverance as we experience a burden lifted of our guilt of sin. But even as Israel experienced deliverance out of Egypt, but never as a nation was able to enter the promised land because they didn't believe for the promised land. They didn't have an eternal view of where God was bringing them. They didn't have a long-term future perspective of what God wanted to do in their life. All they could focus on was the now, that they had enough food in their stomach. All they could focus on was the manna on the ground. Because they had no long-term faith for and view for their inheritance, which was to be brought into the land of milk and honey, the promised land, because they had no view for that, but were only focused on the now, even though they were delivered out of Egypt, they still ended up dying in the wilderness and never entered the inheritance. And you know what? Some of you today are in that same boat. You see, you've received Jesus. You've asked him to forgive you for your sins. And beyond that, you're just living in the now. You have no real view or faith for the fact that what God really wants is to bring you and I into an experience with him. Remember, the Shulamite bride said, he has brought me in to his banquet hall. This is describing fellowship. A banquet hall is where people ate together and enjoyed fellowship together and enjoyed each other's company in a celebratory sense. She had an experience of this. It was real. It was fulfilling her. But like I said, Israel that was delivered out of Egypt died in the wilderness because they had no view for the promised land. They had no faith for the promised land. They were not able to deal with the problems of today in view of the inheritance that was ahead. They didn't look to the inheritance that was ahead. All they looked at was the now, and they complained that they didn't have enough food in their stomach or enough water, and they ended up dying in the wilderness. And likewise, what I'm saying, beloved one, is many of us right now are just like them. We don't have faith to be brought into the bosom of God's love. We don't have faith that we can really experience him. We don't have faith that Jesus' promise could really be fulfilled in our life, that if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Rivers of living water, Yeshua said, will flow from our innermost beings, and his spirit within us would become a well of living water springing up to eternal life so that we thirst no more. We don't have faith for that. We're not contending for that. All we're focusing on is the problems of today. And beloved, if we're not careful, and if we don't repent of that kind of attitude, if we don't start having an eternal perspective of our faith, rather than a just now perspective of our faith, we're gonna end up like the children of Israel that don't enter into God's rest. You see, the New Testament tells us to be careful that we don't stop short of entering into God's rest, that we don't stop short, if you will, of entering into his banquet hall that the Shulamite bride just described here. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and Rabbi will be right back. But first, we have a special book announcement. Let's check it out. 
Entering God's presence and walking in unity with Him isn't meant to be an occasional experience reserved for only a select few, but it should mark the lives of all God's children. In Rabbi Schneider's new book, Entering His Presence, Rabbi offers keys to help you engage in an authentic relationship with God, empowering your prayers, and connecting you with the Father's presence more intimately. You'll receive fresh revelation each day as you're inspired through a hundred devotional meditations from the Word of God. Order your copy. Call 800-359-6208 or visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com. We are truly so excited for you to get this life-changing new book. So pick up a copy today. And now here is Rabbi with the rest of today's message. Getting even deeper to the root of our problem, beloved ones, that I'm wanting us to consider today in the love of Hashem, the love of God, so that we can be quickened and come out of it, is this. We think that faith sometimes is just affirming certain doctrines of the scriptures. We say, yes, I believe that. I believe the basic doctrines of the faith, as I've just stated. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus is the only way to God. I believe there's only, yes. We think that if we simply say yes to those things, that makes us believers. But beloved, that's a deception and a trap because affirming that something is true is not enough. What has to happen for us to have saving faith and to be brought into an experiential relationship like the Shulamite bride is describing for us here In order to be brought into this experiential reality, what has to happen is when the truth is proclaimed, not only must we affirm that it's true, but we have to reach out with faith and take it, bring it into our soul, make it ours, and move forward in it. It's not enough to say yes to it. True faith reaches out and takes a hold of the truth and then appropriates it and receives it. And as a result, it propels us into our destiny. Again, many, so many in the church today, they don't have an eternal view of what God wants to do. To them, they think it's enough to say the sinner's prayer and quote, get saved. Again, just like Israel thought it was enough, they got out of the bondage of Egypt, but died in the wilderness because they had no long-term view of what God was bringing them into, so too some of us today don't have a long-term view of what God's doing. We're only focused in the now. Will God meet my needs today? Will God give me a husband? Will God give me a wife? Will God pay my bills? Will God give me a promotion? Will you give me a new house? Will you give me a new car? And there's nothing wrong with casting all our cares upon him. But you see, if we're rooted only in the now and focused only on the temporary now and don't understand what God's wanting to bring us into, which is an experiential relationship with him that's tangible, that we know he's real all around us, we're experiencing him. If we're not contending for that, but only focusing on our temporal needs, will be like Israel and die in bondage, die in the wilderness because of unbelief. We need to understand that the scripture over and over again tells us that we're being called into a kingdom in which Yeshua is going to reign and everything is going to be subject to him and the fullness of his kingdom is not yet here, but we're contending for it. See, a lot of people today are talking about the kingdom now, but let me tell you, No matter how many times people declare the kingdom now, the kingdom is not fully now and won't be fully now until Yeshua returns. And we have to be living today in anticipation for the fullness of his kingdom to be manifest. Like the leaders of the faith of all times, they believe God their whole life and they hadn't even yet entered into the fullness of their destiny even when they died They still are not entered in like Abraham and Moses that was looking for a greater city whose architect and builder was God. And they died in faith, having never seen the city, but they were living for something out in the future. And you and I need some of that imparted into our own soul. We need to get our eyes off of just the now. And we need to understand that Jesus is coming back and that his reward is with him. 
and that our inheritance is to fully experience the Lord, not just these temporal needs. And that when Jesus returns, not only will he reward us for what we've done, but furthermore, he's going to put us in positions of government depending on how faithful we've been to him on this earth. So I just wanted to encourage you today that there's more, folks. This Shulamite bride said, he's brought me into his banquet hall. She was brought into an experience. I want to encourage you to live for something that's greater. Keep your eyes on the future. Understand that God is bringing you into something that's way beyond this world. This world is not our home. It's not just about having our needs met now. It's not just about the kingdom now. It's about God is bringing us into a future destiny in which everything will be transformed. And these mortal bodies will be putting on immortal bodies. And we're going to be glorified and it's all going to be dependent on what we're doing with our lives today. Will you live in faith that you can experience God and as you put him first in your life, know that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. As you order your steps in obedience every day by monitoring your thoughts, bringing your mind into subjection of the Holy Spirit and of the word of God, by monitoring your words, making sure that the words that are coming from your mouth are pleasing and acceptable to him. Like David said, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. And as we're ordering ourselves, sacrificially giving ourselves over to Hashem, over to Jesus in this life, we're going to be brought in, listen, to the experience of relationship, into the banquet hall. Like Yeshua said, if you obey me, I'm going to come to you, John 14, and disclose myself to you. And my father and I will come and make our home in you. So as we order our path after him, beloved, two things will happen in closing today. Number one, as we continue every day, as soon as we get out of bed and our feet at the floor, we recognize Jesus is Lord. And our mission for the day is to submit to him, to surrender to him, to love him, to put him first, to give ourselves sacrificially to him, to serve him, denying ourselves, like Jesus said, if you're gonna come after me, you must pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. If we'll do that every day, make that the mission of our life, whether we're going through an easy time or a hard time, the goal is always the same, to obey him, to lay a hold of him, to submit to him, to love him. If we'll do that, we're gonna be more and more brought into an experience, into the banquet hall. And then secondly, I'm wanting to encourage us all that we need to stop focusing on the toes of our own feet. So many of us, all we're looking to God for is to meet our needs right now in the temporary. But when you study the scripture with revelation and an open heart and mind, you'll recognize that the call of God and the destiny over your life is much bigger, beloved ones, than God, than Father just meeting your needs today. He's calling you in to an eternal glory. He's calling you and I in to a theocracy, to a government in which he is going to reign and he's going to be giving us positions in his millennial kingdom and in the new heavens and the new earth and the positions that he's putting us in in the transformed world when Jesus reigns is going to be based on how faithful were we to him in this age. So let's lift our eyes and look to the hills from where our salvation comes. Let's gain a greater perspective of what life is all about. Let's get our mind just off the here and the temporal and the now. Let's keep the goal before us. Let's be willing to suffer what we need to suffer to get there because everybody that desires to live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. And beloved, when we bring our mind and our thoughts into harmony with his word, and his truth, we're going to go somewhere and we're going to go somewhere quick. God will propel us by the Holy Spirit into eternal life. And beloved, Jesus said, he that puts their hope in me will not be disappointed. It's only one life and it'll soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. 
You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. We're in a series titled Mysteries of the Song of Songs. And if you missed any portion of our message, you can hear the entire message online when you visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You know, Rabbi mentioned earlier that the Bible is meant to lead us into relationship with God. And it's so important that we focus on the here and now when it comes to that relationship, because this is the training ground for everything in eternity. And learning the history and details of books like the Song of Songs, it allows us to better understand God's heart and they help us grow in our faith. Another way of helping us grow in our faith is also by partnering with one another in prayer and with our finances. And to tell us a little bit more, I wanna turn it back over to Rabbi. Beloved, whether you're from Africa, India, Israel, the United States, it doesn't matter. We're all on the same journey if we're following Father through Yeshua. And that is to be changed into His likeness, to experience personal transformation. In order for this to take place, a lot of work and effort is required on our part. We have to be obedient. And God brings us through certain tests in order to bring us to the next level. And one of the tests that all of us must pass is putting Him first with our finances. It's a test of faith, it's a test of trust, and it's a test of personal denial. Jesus said, unless we pick up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow Him, we can't be His disciple. I want to encourage you today, if you're not already, let's put him first with our finances. And I would say this, if discovering the Jewish Jesus is being used by Father God to bless you, consider making a financial sacrifice to him today through this ministry. Beloved, this is Rabbi Schneider saying, I love you and God bless you and Shalom. If the Lord is leading you to support this ministry with a one-time financial gift or offering, or if God is leading you to step out in faith this year and to become a monthly partner, I want to invite you to give online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also give a gift of any amount when you call us and the number to dial, it's 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. As our way of saying thank you for helping us reach listeners all across the world, we'll send you Rabbi's latest message of the month as a digital download, along with our current newsletter, which highlights important events like our Taking the Rainbow Back campaign. We're working hard to raise the standards for our kids and the next generation. If you'd like to stand with us as we restore the meaning of the rainbow to its God-given purpose, then we would love to hear from you. And we would love for you to stand with us during the inaugural Taking the Rainbow Back weekend. It's July 28th through the 30th, and it's our collective action weekend as we unite for this cause. To learn more on how you can participate and get extra resources, connect with us online at Taking the Rainbow Back. Back.com. Now here is Rabbi Schneider to wrap up this message with a special blessing. The words from the Aaronic blessing in the book of Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 through 27 helps us to realize how good God is to you and I personally. So receive his blessing into your life and then beloved one, go bless somebody else in Jesus name today. Yahweh, Vayish Marecha. Yair Yahweh, Penavelecha. Vihunecha. Isa Yahweh. Penavelecha veasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you.
and Shalom. I'm Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Join us next week when Rabbi Schneider continues our study from the book of the Song of Songs. That's coming up Monday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.